Welcome to the home performance classroom. Again, my little corner over here where I've got my layout of an imaginary house, which is based on real houses. But I wanna talk about um, locations and design and how you can start to think about using the layout to help your performance. So one of the things that I like to point out to people when we just do a quick plan review is that the uh, closets in your home become very important because they are an extra layer of insulation. And I know this because we lived in a tiny house on wheels for five years and everything in a tiny home is built into the walls. And therefore, tiny homes have a much bigger incidence of condensation and mold growth because you've got all this extra insulation that air is able to get behind. So you've got hot moist air getting behind things that are insulating that wall surface. And now we've got cold surface condensation. So in this case, we can see, uh, we come in the front door here on the entry and we've got a storage room right here. There's two ways to lay out the storage room. We could put the uh, storage shelves here along this wall and this wall, or we could walk in here and we could put the storage along this wall and this wall. That is an exterior wall. And you wanna try not to pile a bunch of boxes and a bunch of clothes and coats up against exterior walls. Likewise, in this bedroom, if we were to put the closet in this bedroom here instead of over here, now I'm going to layer a bunch of clothes right up against that exterior wall. And that is the most dangerous place in this house, especially because it's on an outside corner, which is gonna be even more of an insulation issue. The super nerds among us call that thermal bridging. And I wanna just tell everybody, like I tell my clients, thermal bridging is often way overthought. We talk about it way too much because in real life, it just does not matter. Um, feel free to comment below if you're one of the super nerds and you wanna pick a fight with me about that. Um, I have lived in several houses that have thermal bridging and it's just not, it's not important because it's a big pillow. It's a giant marshmallow, Stay Puft Marshmallow Man that you're fighting against. It's like not, there's no sharp edges on this in real life. So closets here inside the conditioned envelope completely are great. Um, that is gonna be no mold condensation issue at all. And so when you walk into this closet, it will never smell musty. And I've had that complaint from people who move into a brand new house. The closet smells musty after a few years and it's because of that issue. It's not just uh, about old homes. Now also bathrooms. This bathroom right here follows our rule for uh, ventilation. We've got the door here. We have the toilet in between the door and the shower. We'd want our exhaust vent to be right here. That way, when it turns on, air comes in under the door and goes past the toilet on its way to the exhaust vent, which is where it's making a path for. And it's grabbing as much stuff as possible as it goes across the, the room. However, it breaks another one of the rules, which is don't put bathtubs on exterior walls. It's just risky. It's gonna cool off the bathtub faster, so you won't be able to take what uh, my wife and I tend to do sometimes when it's like the kids are asleep and we take an hour long bath together, just hanging out like it's a hot tub. Uh, that's a cool thing to be able to do, but you have to be able to have the thing hang on to its heat to do that. So again, this one on an exterior wall, you don't really want that. When you start separating toilets or what we call a powder from the shower, now we have to have an exhaust fan in both places. So um, thinking about that, and by the way, when I'm specking ERVs, I'm generally talking about 25 CFM in a shower, 15 CFM in a uh, toilet. Also, uh, having a central area like this is great. We can use a central return for this. And um, having a chase way, knowing where you're gonna have your mechanical system, if it's gonna be in the storage closet, if it's gonna be in the laundry, if it's gonna be in the attic over top or in the crawl space underneath, um, and how exactly that's all going to be connected to your duct system, which I'm linking on screen now about how important duct systems are for high performance homes. But all of these layout uh, considerations 
are things that you'll want to interface with your architect. The architects are great at thinking about flow and lifestyle and like usefulness of spaces. I am not an expert in all that. That's why we consult with architects like we did on our home that I'm talking to you from right now before we built it because like we don't know about that stuff. So once you get that straightened out and you get this performance design kind of into the space, avoiding things like a giant great room with a vaulted ceiling that's going to separate two wings of the house without any way of getting ductwork across it, then the happier you'll be with the performance of the actual systems that you get installed in there. Because of course, you want to limit the amount of equipment, you want to limit the amount of maintenance that you have to do on that equipment, and how difficult that maintenance gets. Um, you want to limit the number of filters you have to change. That's one of the things in my house. I, I have a lessons learned video coming soon, but I've got 15 filters in this house that I am in charge of. And if I get hit by a bus, this gonna, it's not going to be pretty. Uh, somebody has to do it. So um, I'm still writing the manual for my house. And that is a message for all of you who are designing high performance homes. It's, it takes some work. So use your brain to think through the planning. Use your brain to make sure that the inspections and the testing happens during construction so that you don't have accidents that happen after the fact. And you're like, whoa, this is a lot more expensive to deconstruct the house and fix all this stuff now. Um, because some problems are designed into homes. And that is the saddest story for people who are like me, who test homes for a living. So please do comment below uh, or question if you have anything to, uh, to add. I will address those personally. Like and subscribe. Tune in next time.